Hello, in this video I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of going through the emails and determining that they're a scam by using IPNet info or Web of Trust, I'm just going to compare emails and show you the similarities in each of them. And by the time the video is over, you should be able to identify a 419 Nigerian scam. So let's start right at the very top here. The very first email is, let us claim this money. It's not addressed to me because they don't know my name. It gives me their name as Richard Mr. Tan Boone Mang. Okay. He's offering me a great opportunity. His client has died from heart failure. And the family died in the tsunami disaster in China in 2008. They've left 9.5 million US dollars. And this offer is available to me because of the unavailability of next of kin or relatives. So they supposedly can't find a next of kin or any relatives to give this money to. So they found me. On the next paragraph it says, Since none of the family relative is alive to claim this fund, I decided to contact you quickly. And I'm only reading the highlighted areas here. I'm not going to read the entire paragraph. It says, So that the bank will wire the funds directly into your bank account. He wants to present me as the next parent report to his client. And the bank will wire the funds directly into my bank account. Under the next paragraph, it's a risk-free project and the proceedings will be shared 50%. And he wants an immediate response. Down below it says, I await your prompt response immediately. So there's your sense of urgency. And then he gives his name down here, which is Mr. Tan Richard Boone Main. Now if we go back up, his name is Richard Mr. Tan Boone Main. Okay, and that's one. Let's go to the next one. It's to Sir Madam. It's not directly to The first paragraph tells me that this is from a wife of a former oil company employee in Asia. And she goes on to say, but before his death during the tsunami disaster, we were married but without children. So now they're trying to make you feel sorry for him. One's died, the other one's sick. And she's been diagnosed with lung cancer. And she only has but a few months to live. And then in the last paragraph it says, I want to reprofile the total sum of seven million five hundred United States dollars to establish a charity foundation on my name to keep memories alive. Next it says, I need someone that is trustworthy. She's never met me, we've never had contact with each other, but she believes I'm trustworthy. It says, if you are capable and trustworthy, I'm ready to give you 10% of the total sum. And again, all I have to do is write her and say, hey, I'm capable, I'm trustworthy, send me that 10%. The next one is titled, Your Diplomat Has Arrived at Sarasota Bradenton International Airport, Florida. Call him now. Okay. Here again is Dear Beneficiary. He's not addressing me by my name because he doesn't know my name. He says, The CBN Board of directors have a meeting today that all victims who lost his or her hard earning money will compensated with just 2.2 million dollars can hardly even read it the grammar is so bad you have 24 hours to call the above number in the subject and speak with diplomat David Mike and that's the entire contents of the email I have no idea how I lost all my hard earning money very bad the next one is titled Dear Sir Madam again no name because they don't know my name it's coming from a Captain Grants Hall and as you can see they capitalize his entire name and his title and as usual the letter is addressed to a sir or madam it's not addressed directly to me because they don't know who I am I found you listed in the Trade Center Chambers of Commerce directory here in Iraq now why would I be in the Trade Center Chambers of Commerce directory in Iraq And it says, I am Captain Grants Hall, an officer in the U.S. Army. I'm on the move to Afghanistan. I really need your help in assisting me with the safekeeping of two military trunk boxes, which has just arrived the United Kingdom from the Iraq. I hope you can be trusted. Kindly view for your records. So here they're already saying, I hope you can be trusted. In other words, they don't know me. They don't know if I'm trustworthy or not. And then they want me to click on a link here. Never click on a link in an email. And then it says, if you can be trusted, I will explain further when I get a response from you. So once again, I can contact these people and say, hey, I'm trustworthy. And they'll get right back to me. 
It says, reconfirm the following to me as follows and contact me immediately on my private email. And they want your name, address, telephone number, copy of the driver's license. And then down below it says, God bless America, all capitalized. And then it says, Captain Grants Hall, all in caps, USA Army. So now you should be seeing the similarities. Most of the emails are not addressed to you directly. A lot of them show a sense of urgency. They have a lot of money involved. And they need you to keep the transaction secret. Let's go to the next one. Scam the victim. U.S. $250,000 beneficiary. And then it even gives a payment code. This is from Zenith Bank PLC. And it says, hello dear. Again, not addressed to me directly. How are you today? Down in, down in the second paragraph it says the United Nations and the present United States government to restore the dignity and economy of the nations based on the agreement with the World Bank assistance to help make the world a better place for all with the sole aim of abolishing poverty. So here they give you a good reason as to why they're sending this email to you. Then down below it says this email is to all the people that have been scammed in any part of the world. The United Nations have agreed to compensate them with a sum of $250,000. This includes every foreign contractors that may have not received their contract sum and people that have had an unfinished transaction or international business that failed due to government problems, etc. So what they're saying is this email and the compensation is for all people in the world who have ever been scammed. Now does that make sense? That doesn't even make sense at all. It says, your name and email was in the list submitted by our monitoring team of Economic and Financial Crime Commission observers. And this is why we are contacting you. This have been agreed upon and have been signed. So as usual, grammar is terrible in it. They're telling me that my name has been submitted by our monitoring team of Economic and Financial Crime Commissions. Why would my name even be in there to be submitted? I don't know. And then it says you're advised to contact Mr. Godwin. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Of Zenith Bank, Nigeria PLC. He is our representative in Nigeria. This fund is in a bank draft for security purpose. So he will send it to you and you can clear it in any bank of your choice. Now that's ridiculous. Have you ever been able to cash a check at any bank of your choice? Or do you ever think that you would be able to cash a check from out of the states at any bank of your choice? No way. Then it gives us a link here to click on, which I didn't click. It says, send him your full name and telephone number, your correct mailing address, where you want him to send the draft to. And it says, no, you are not supposed to pay him for any official fee except the charge for the delivery of your draft to your doorstep. So there he's saying, no, you don't have to pay any fee, but wait, you have one fee you need to pay, and that's the charge for the delivery to your doorstep. So there's where they're going to get you with the money, right there. Contact Mr. Godwin, whatever, immediately for your check, and that's about it. So again, we have grammar errors, we have a large sum of money involved, urgency. You don't have to pay any money except the charge for delivery of your draft to your doorstep. So this is just another bad one. I'm going to go on to the next one. Next one is titled, Good Day, How Are You? And this is exactly how the email was. As you can see, it says, Good Day, Friend. It wasn't addressed to me because they don't know my name. This is a personal email directed to you for your consideration alone. I request that it remain and be treated as such only. So they want you to keep this private. They don't want you to be telling everybody you got an email that's going to offer you a ton of money. It says, please bear with me for now and do not ask my name. So he don't even want you to know his name right now. Now, why would you get involved with somebody from out of the country offering a large sum of money, but they don't want you to know their name? That just doesn't make sense. I have an interesting business proposal for you that will be of immense benefit to both of us. And then it says we stand to gain 7.2 million U.S. dollars between us in a matter of days. Most importantly, I will need you to promise to keep whatever you learn from me between us even if you decide not to go along with me. Of course they want you to keep it private because this email was sent out to the masses. I'm not the only one that received this email. 
I'm not the only one that's going to say this email is a fraud. It's another one where a large sum of money is involved. All of a sudden, this guy is going to be at JFK Airport waiting for you. It's ridiculous. The next one's titled, Talk to Me Today. And again, it's addressed to Dear Beneficiaries. It's not my name, because they don't know my name. And right here is the biggest clue in this entire email. When you see Central Bank of Nigeria, you know right away that this email is bad. Here's a big mistake that they made already. They didn't even capitalize Central Bank. It says, I came across your file, which was marked X, and your released disc painted red. I took time to study it and found out that you have paid virtually all fees and but the fund was not released to you. The most annoying thing is that they won't tell you the truth that on no account will they ever release the fund to you. Instead, they allow you to spend money unnecessarily. I do not intend to work here all the days of my life. I can release this fund to you if you can certify me of your corporation and my security. I needed to do this because you need to know the statues of your funds and cause for the delay. Please, this is like a mafia setting in Nigeria. You may not understand it because you are not a Nigerian. The only thing needed to release this fund is a 2013 new payment authorization code which will be fixed in your release disk and confirmation to the Federal Ministry of Finance for clearance of the transferred amount in your account. Once the 2013 new payment authorization code is obtained, funds will immediately reflect in your bank within 24 hours. The code is all that is needed to complete this transaction. So they make it sound like it's very easy to get this large sum of money put into your bank within 24 hours. It says note that the actual funds are valued at $10 million and the president made an additional 15.5 million US dollar compensation fund to be shared among all unpaid outstanding listed beneficiaries. So this is names of different mafias and different banks supposedly that aren't working with us to get us our money. And you can see, I'm just going to scroll down here, they put one hundred and twenty five different names in here they listed and I'll guarantee you they've all either come out of address books they're made up or they're stolen and we'll get down here to the bottom to conclude this financial transaction immediately and also send to me your details and convenience telephone numbers for easy communications and it says regards and it gives me the Mr. James Barrows down below gives a warning it says this transmission is confidential and intended solely for the person or organization to whom it is addressed it may contain privileged and or confidential information if you are not the intended recipient you are not authorized to copy distribute or take any action in reliance on it if you have received this transmission in error please notify the sender by reply email and delete so the grammar is so bad in this one, I can hardly even read it half the time. You, again, you get the sense of urgency, large sums of money. So I gave quite a few examples here. Hopefully after comparing them all, you get an idea of what to look for in these emails. And you'll be able to identify them a lot quicker and easier. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.